come to Ghana and you don't visit ANC Mall, that means you practically have not visited Ghana. ANC Mall was the first mall built in Ghana right here in East Legon. And guess what? It was by a diaspora who worked at WHO in Geneva for so many years. Him and his wife decided to move back to Ghana and set up the first mall in Ghana, built in 2002. I want to find out how has he been able to maintain a business in Ghana for so long? And also what made him move back in the first place? A lot of people complain about land being so expensive. How was he able to get such a big land and build this amazing mall, which is fully owned by a Ghanaian? Let's find out more about this great man and great woman, Mr. and Mrs. Asamwa. Hello, Chairman. Hey, yeah, yeah, no, Looking good. Welcome to The Dentist Show and I am joined by Mr. Andrew Kwabana Asamwa, who is the founder of ANC Mall, which started in 2002. He was able to climb up the ladder in Geneva at WHO, one of the biggest institutions. He was a special advisor to the WHO Director General when it comes to constitutional matters. A barrister, called to the bar, Ghana, Nigeria have affiliations with everything, a doctor as well. And your journey is inspiring. The fact that ANC Mall is fully Ghanaian owned. I remember when I posted it on my social media, Andy, a lot of people were like, what, is Ghanaian owned? It's not Lebanese, it's not Indian. And how does that make you feel actually when you hear that something that is Ghanaian owned, people are saying it's you know either Lebanese or another country? It makes me feel happy and sad at the same time. Happy in the sense that a Ghanaian have been able to do something which people think it cannot be done by a Ghanaian. And it makes me sad in the sense that more of this cannot be done by Ghanaians. I feel that in Ghana, we should be able to make sure that Ghanaians occupy the higher highest, that all these about 80% should be Ghanaian owned and 20% foreign owned. But when you have a majority of foreign owned, at the end of the day, these people are not Father Christmas. Every money they make, they have to take it outside. Whereas if a Ghanaian is doing business, the money stays within the country. So that's why I am happy and sad at the same time. I mean, 15 years of ANC Mall, did you ever imagine that it would get to this level? I know that owning a Ghanaian business in Ghana is difficult, it's challenging. Sometimes you don't get the support that it's needed. For you to be able to have this length of a journey, 15 years, is quite significant. Because I've stayed outside, when I was coming, I came with the mind that if I have 20% of the total amount I need, for the more, I'll get a mortgage. So I came with that mind, went to the banks, and the banks not only will not give you a mortgage, the maximum a bank will give you payable in five years. At the same time, the bank also did not believe that this will work, because this was the first time. So they never thought that this European Western mall will work in Ghana. Actually, one of the bankers told me, look, here our mall is the Makola market. So there were a lot of teething problems trying to put it together. So when I saw one, that was difficult to raise the money. And two, even if I could get it, the interest rate they were asking were too atrocious. I decided to take a risk and sell my properties abroad. I had a home in London. I have a place in Geneva. 
I had a property in America, I have to sell everything to put it together. And even when I did all that, I still have to decide to do it in phases. I had a master plan, but I couldn't. So what I did was concentrate first on the main mall, get the tenants in, and from there move. This was the first phase to the second phase, which was the fuel station. Then we went to the office building where you have the restaurants. And finally, we went to where the university is. So it took us about 10 years to get ANC more as you see it there. And then we went further to invest in solar. ANC more is the only more in the whole of West Africa that is fully powered by solar. We use the electricity as a backup, but 90-90% of our electricity needs is generated by ourselves. We are very proud that we've been able to do this. You spoke about a few challenges and a lot of people in the diaspora who are coming back home trying to set up a business probably won't stay the length of time that you still encourage yourself that, okay, I can do it, it can be done. Interest rate ridiculously high if you're trying to get a loan here. Same with mortgage, it's very difficult. What made you want to keep on making sure that this gets delivered? Okay, two things. One, when I was coming, because I work with the UN, I've traveled a lot and I've seen that in many African countries, even smaller than Ghana, they have shopping malls like in Harare, in Lusaka and other places. So I felt and looking at the number of Ghanaians who are outside the country and a lot of Ghanaians who have studied abroad, I knew that this system will work. Number two, in a way, I think because I went incremental, I was able to see what is needed. I mean, when you look at the ANC more, it's not your typical more. Because when you go to your typical more, you are only going to buy. ANC is a misuse complex. You have a fitness center. When I tell people that there's a swimming pool here, they don't even believe it. You have a playground for children. You have a big food court. You have clinics, dentists, laboratory, laundry. So it's a sort of the area, this is their mall. So anybody who is living in this Legon, you don't only come to ANC to shop. You come to dine. You come to enjoy. In the evening, there's a nightclub. So it's the people's more. So everybody has something he gets here. I meet people who tell me they don't come here one day, they feel that something is missing. Today is Saturday. If you go to, you see people are here just to watch football, you know, meet their friends and things. You come here at midnight, the place is full. You come here in the morning, the place is full. So it's a community more. We are here to serve the community and we go out of our way to look at what we feel the community needs. If you come and you want a space, we want to know what you want to do. And it has to fit in into what we feel will be serving the community more. So ANC is very different from other malls. How did you come up with the name ANC? ANC is me and my wife. I'm Andy, Andrew, my wife is Cecilia. We've been married for 50 years. We've been all over the world together. I got married when I was 24. My That's wife right. was 20. Wow. And we've been all over the world. So for me, it's a partnership. We do everything together. And this is to acknowledge her support to me. So it's A and C more. And basically, it's a family. I brought in my children who are helping me. One of my children is the MD of the company. Another one is the operations manager. So it's a family that I have already put a succession plan so that whatever may be, the business will continue. That's one of the key things that we aren't able to do in Ghana. I don't see a lot of companies that are like over 100 years old where you find that in the UK, in the US. What do you think is lacking? Because what happens to us as Ghanaians that we are not able to keep our businesses for so long? What happened to us is we don't look long term. He start business, he's doing very well. He send the children abroad, they finish, they get job there and they stay. Now the day that something happens to him, the children comes and they have no idea of the business. When you look at the Indians and you look at the Lebanese, they bring the children in when they are young. 
go to a mommy and pop shop in London. When the child comes from school, he comes to do this. When he's not there, the mother is there. When the father, so they build a business, they, it becomes part of them. That is what we don't do. I mean, it was not easy because all my children, they were in private schools in Britain, they went to the States, some were engineers, but I have to sit with them and tell them to look at the future. And then finally, I was able to convince them that it's worth their while to leave whatever they are doing and come and support me. And so far, they've been happy being here. And so far now, it gives me a lot of, I am not involved in the day to day. I'm just behind planning. Now we have a new mall which is ready. It will be open very soon. It's called ANC Corner. ANC Corner is basically going to be a home decor. Everything to do with construction, building, home decoration, furniture, everything. Because in Ghana, if you are building, you have to go to about 20 different places to buy cement here, to buy iron rods here. Now we want to put all of this together. This is also a first. There's nothing like that here. And then on the top floor, we're going to have restaurant, fine dining. There's no fine dining in East Legon, you know. So we're going to have fine dining there. It's almost finished. The tenants are fitting. So we hope that in March, that will be open. Then we have a bigger project called the ANC Village. This is our OEB on the way to Dodowa before you read the Valley View School. Yeah. Yeah, it's about 10 times the size of ANC Mall. It's going to be a whole village. Houses, apartments, commercial, you know. So I plan in such a way that I may not be there, but the plan is there yeah. and the plan will continue. The plan will definitely continue. But I want to go back to your children. Was it hard to convince them? Because every child has their own vision and what they want to do in life. And so convincing them to leave their jobs in the U.S., wherever, the U.K., wherever they were, was that really challenging for you? It was difficult, but I think what helped me was that because I decided to come early. When I came, I was 55. So they have just finished and they've just started. They were not entrenched. Okay. So it was easy. And actually, all of them didn't come at the same time. One came. After some time, the other one saw the E came, and only recently, the third one came. So it was not that you went and, no. Okay. It took time, and I think maybe if I was doing it today, it would be difficult because they would be married, they have bought their mortgage and things like that. It would be more difficult. So I think maybe because the timing was good, and because, as I said, it didn't all come, but one came, and then they saw that was not bad, and the other came, and the rest came. So, uh, but we have to encourage more. Yeah. When you look, some of these big Indian companies in Ghana, the people running them, it was their fathers. You know, Malcolm and things, if you go to, they are all Ghanaians. They were all born here. Yeah. It was their fathers who started. So why can't we do that? Why is it that when a Ghanaian dies, the business dies with him? When you go outside the country, some businesses have been there for 100 years, 15 years, 200 years. We need to be able to do that. That is the only way we can build this country. I'm glad you touched on that point because it looks like when a, a Ghanaian owner and founder of a business dies, the business dies. Why are we not able to continue the legacy of our founders? Because we don't plan. You must have a vision. You must have a plan. I mean, you go, somebody is a tailor, top class tailor in England. He makes sure that his son, who went to the top school, comes in. It's planning. The problem is that we don't plan. And then you are doing business, things are going on well. Then you start having too many women, having children from different women that also becomes a contention when you die, each group, you know, so these are, I've seen it so much. You have to be focused, you have to have a vision. From the very beginning, you should know where you are going. And these things, you don't just hope it happens, you plan it even when you are alive.
in the last year or so, we had an influx of diasporans that wanted to come, and now it's like they're not too sure whether they should come. Would you still encourage them to come back home? No, I encourage them to come back because I came 20 years now. And what I see, the opportunities in Ghana, you cannot get them anywhere. You know, when you go to the United States or you go to Europe, for example, in America, there are four companies who sign contract with all the retailers and all the big companies. So when they open the mall, they go in. You just can't go and open a mall there. You go to England, you go to Britain, it's all, so here, opportunities are abound. It's just that we don't see it and we don't make the best out of it. But I believe that there's more money. I practically see gold on the ground, only that we don't see it. Why is it that we are finding it difficult to come, but foreigners, Indians, Chinese, Lebanese, they come and make money here. Why? Is it not the same place? The opportunities are here. Is it that we support them more for them to come? Is a Ghanaian supported the same way as a Lebanese coming in? That is one part which I think uh, the government, they don't make a conscious effort to help and support indigenous Ghanaians or Africans to come and establish business. For example, I've been here, I set my company 20 years ago, ANC Mall is 15 years, we are building two other malls. I've not got any exemption from the country, but I know foreign companies, they come and they give them full exemption. Sometimes five years, 10 years, you know, so the government should make conscious effort. I have colleagues, who went back to Malaysia, one of them went to Indonesia, they actually went with only ideas, but the government helped them. One started a laboratory supported by the government in Malaysia. Now it has 18 laboratories in Malaysia. So a government also should make an effort, a specific effort. But the only problem I see sometimes, politics, there should be a special system set together to see whoever comes, if you have a good plan, you are supported, and then you know. So I think something is lacking from the part of the government. So that discourages people from coming. So if you have a recreative job outside, you don't want to lose everything and come. But I think that the opportunities here are more than you can get anywhere. The other thing is the interest rates are very high. So if you come here, you want to set up a business, and you go to the bank, and you have to take interest 40%, how can you make it? There are some fundamental problems which the government has to come in and find a way to support. You know, so I encourage people to come, but they must know that there are problems. And then when you come, I always advise people, don't rush to do everything. Take your time, pace yourself, Go slowly, 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 and build up whatever you want to put together. What would you say are the four or five things that you have learned from living abroad in a diaspora and coming back home to Ghana? And if there were anything that you could change, if you were in power, if you had the power to do so, what are the things that you would change to make it better? First, I think I cannot compare living abroad in the sense that I was lucky with the, to work with an international organization. So things were very, very different. But what I see when I'm here and I see how people do business outside and I see the support given, I feel that Ghanaians need to be given more support. I think that the government should have a special program for people coming in, support them, but also be part of the business. For example, my friend in Malaysia told me that when they give you money, the government will appoint the project manager so that the project is done according to the plan that you brought. You just don't give the money to the person and before you know you have bought the biggest Mercedes and the biggest car in town. So the government should be consciously ensure that they support them. There are a lot of difficulties. One thing I've also noticed is that 
when you are doing business here and you want to be successful, you have to be very honest and you have to, your word should be your bound. You should work in this way that when you talk to people, supply you, all the people who I started, who supply me with things, up to today, the same people are supplying me. Sometimes you go and take things from people, you don't want to pay them and all that, so you create bad atmosphere. So if you are honest and you do the right thing, three, take good care of your staff, because your staff is the backbone of everything you are doing. Your staff should be partners with you. They not, should not be employer-employee relationship. So it's very, very important. You take good care of your staff, you support them, and you make them feel that you are part of them. You also should be humble. Ghanaians, when they do business, it goes into their head. I mean, I'll go out there, nobody knows me. And that's the way I want it to be. But when we do business, sometimes we get a bit too pompous. It doesn't work well. So see, these are some of the things, if you want to do business here, like any other place, the tenants here, we don't treat them as tenants. We treat them as partners. We go to them, discuss their problems, help them to find solutions. So the people who are working here, the people who have shops here, some have been with us from the very beginning. When the COVID came, nobody came to us. We went to them, we said, because of the COVID, you will not pay rent for this period. After that, we reduce your rent for this period until finally, we came back to the normal distance. You have to get all the people around you, both the people who are serving you and the people who you are serving to know that you are all a team working together. So we're at Blush Avenue. This is one of my friends from the UK. Hi. How are you, my darling? How are you? I'm good. Oh my, oh my, I'm in trouble. So this is one of the stores that's in ANC yeah. Mall. They do the best nails, best eyelashes, best hair, everything. Braids, whatever it is that you want to do, this is the spot. So how is everything? Everything's going well. We're yeah. preparing for the busy season. Yes. For December. Yeah. So we're just doing all our training. Okay, good. And preparing for promotion. And there seems to be a lot of diasporans here that are, a lot, a lot that have a lot of shops. Yeah. Diasporans from the States, the UK, the Middle East, everywhere. everywhere. So okay. There's a large variety. Awesome. And this is where I always buy my pancakes as well. They do the best pancakes. <laughs> yes, and then stoles and stitches. Switzerland. Oh, okay. So soles and stitches. Um, again, another diaspora that moved. They repair shoes, sneakers, everything. Hello, hi. my brother. Hi, hi, hi. How, How are, are you? I'm good, thank you. How good, are you? Good. I'm doing very well. How is business in ANC Mall? I mean, ANC Mall is fantastic. The foot traffic. The amount of people that come here, so business is really good, we can't complain. Yeah. Even during the downturn, we're still managing to stay afloat, so Fantastic. business is not bad. Business is not bad because you've managed to expand. Yes, <laughs> we have, we have, we have. We've done some big expansions and we're expanding more before the end of the year. Wow. So, can't complain. And it's all to do with the shoes. So what, what are you doing differently that nobody's doing? Um, you know what, we can do any part of a shoe. We can repair any part of a shoe, a bag, any leather product and a lot of people don't do that they only do probably the underneath of the shoe right. but we do everything else and we've got all the machinery all the supplies to do whatever needs to be done fantastic yeah. Africa we are blessed with abundance of everything that you can think of I've been to the UAE several times and the development that is there the things that are happening this is a place that was built on just desert what are we lacking as Africa what 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 is it that we cannot achieve when we have abundance of things that they don't even have that they are creating when you look at their tourism Dubai is flourishing people are always going to Dubai what is it that we're not doing as a continent I think what we are not doing as a continent is that the Western world makes sure they try to keep us where we are so because they need the raw materials we produce Look at cocoa, Ghana number two, Ivory Coast number one. The cocoa market, let's say if it's 100 billion, the producers of the raw material 
are getting five billion. Now, why don't we make efforts to add value to our cocoa? Why don't we make effort to add value to our mango? You go to the shops, it's full of canned fruits from outside. And we have the tin here because they are making effort to keep us where we are, but we are not fighting to get out of it. They did it to the Asians. I remember when I was young, when you hear in the papers that a country, people are dying of hunger, it is India. Today, India with over one billion population, they have surplus of food and exporting everywhere in the world. Go to Vietnam, which had this long war with America, you'll be shocked at what is going on in Vietnam. We have to make a conscious effort. They don't want us, but we don't let them push us. The others have fought. China, only 30 years ago, China was a third world country. Look at China today. Singapore, they have absolutely nothing. Even water, they import water. Look at Singapore. When Ghana got independence, we had the same independence the same year with Malaysia. And when they look at Ghana, Malaysia, Korea, Singapore, Ghana, according to the statistics, was ahead of all these other countries. Where are they now and where are we now? So I think the problem is us. In the sense that, I mean, they push you so that you export the raw materials to them. They discourage you even from producing your own food. If you go and look at how much tomato, chicken, Rice, Ghana is important. When we have the terrain, everything to be able to produce our own. So I will not blame the West. I mean, they are businessmen. They want to get the best out of it. But what are we doing? How can India now be exporting surplus food with almost 2 billion people? How can China be all over Africa giving us support? China, they have lifted their people now, most Chinese are in the middle class. Why can't we do that? So there's something wrong with us. We need to look inside. There's no need to continue to blame other people. We should look inside and see what we can do to change the situation. We're going to wrap up now. Is there anything that you would want to say to the diaspora or the people who are watching? No, what I want to say to the diaspora is, you know, you're outside. Uh, instead of serving your country, you are serving another country. So you stay there and you say, oh, things are not working. But you have to come and help for things to work. All the things I'm saying, when you're in diaspora, you've got the experience, you work in different, so those experiences need to be brought here so that we can help and all of us to build a country together. But if you stay on the sideline and you are only looking at what is going wrong, and not trying to see what can I do to help, then we continue to be where we are. I mean, you go to China, they intentionally every year send students to America and other things to study. They make sure they bring them back so that the knowledge they got there, they bring it into the country. These are the things we have to do. So the diaspora should not just think of themselves individually, but they should think of their nation and say, what can I go and do? Because if you are outside, you will you always be a foreigner. Yeah. You, can never, you can be in the biggest position, but you still be a foreigner. But if you are in your country, you feel when I go out and I look at the number of people working in the mall, when I go to and see people who are happy and enjoying, I feel content. It's not the money. I feel happy that my little effort is making people happy, people coming here to shop, bringing their children to the playground. So we should all try to see that this is the only continent we have. What can we do to lift our continent to reach the level of the other? If they can do it, we can also do it. So I read a report online that over a million Ghanaians applied for a US visa. Why do you think a lot of people are wanting to move from Ghana? I understand them because things are not easy. I mean, when you're in a country where within a year, the currency can devalue by almost 200%. 
that you can see the problem. It's easy to sit down and pontificate and blame others, but I see their problems. Jobs are difficult, you can't make ends meet. Even when you have a job, the salaries are very, very low. So what do you do? Out of desperation, you want to go. So it's not the people, it's the government which have to make conscious efforts to make things good so that people will stay. So I don't blame the people who are trying to go. I mean, if I'm here, I finish university, I have a degree and I can't get a job, what do you want me to do? Why is it that we cannot stick to using a Ghana city? When I went to the UAE, you have to change your dollar into their currency. When you go to the UK, you have to use the pound. You can't use another currency. Why is it we finding it so difficult to use the Ghana city? When you allow other people to dictate for you, this is what we are doing. I mean, when you say you go to the IMF, you go to the World Bank, there are conditionalities. And some of the conditionalities is what affect us. Because you borrow in dollars. So you have to pay back in dollars. So dollar, even though you have a local money, dollar becomes the medium of your operations. So at the end of the day, we have to sit down and see what we can do. And there's nowhere in this world that you can get things easy. You have to suffer. We all have to. But when we are suffering, we all must suffer together. You cannot have people who are supposed to be serving you, enjoying, and the people who are being served in trouble. We have to be open to say things are not working because we are not looking at it from the right. If you spend all your time going to the euro market to get money, you have to pay back. So they control you. They give you conditions. What do you do? You go to South Africa, you cannot use a dollar there. You have to change your dollar. Nobody will accept your dollar. But Ghana, people will be very happy if you come and instead of paying it in CDs, you give them dollars. But this is condition that we have set up for ourselves. You know, you don't go to Malaysia or China or somewhere and say you have, nobody will touch your dollars. You know, so it is our responsibility to make sure things are done the way other countries have been able to do it so that we can move forward as a continent and as a country. Are we patriotic as Ghanaians? For me, I think leadership by example is how you can instill patriotism in the citizenry. But if you are the leader and we see you in a big car enjoying and everything, how do you want a small man to be patriotic? But you see the leader, he's going through the same hardship as everybody. Then we all, our hands are on deck. So I don't blame the people. I blame the system. What is not working in this country is that the systems are not working. The systems are for some people, but some people are not. No, you go to places where it's working, everybody. I mean, look at what is being happening in England. Just because the chancellor does something, he's out. The prime minister does something, he's out. It doesn't happen here. So this is our problem. So I don't blame the people for not being patriotic. I blame leadership for not instilling patriotism. And the only way you can instill patriotism is to be patriotic yourself. This has been an interesting conversation. And I'm sure that the audience, you have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. And I've learned that you have to pace yourself, right? One step at a time. Because otherwise, you might get frustrated and you might move back, as many have done. A lot of people go into pension, 70, 75, that's when they move back. But he decided to come back and do something. You can't just be in the UK, US and be complaining if you haven't come back in Ghana to do something. And he said he doesn't blame people who are trying to go across the borders. Times are difficult, and so you have to look at your situation and kind of see what is best for you. So my last words would be, Ghana needs you. We need to make sure that we work as a collective. For us to be patriotic, every single one of us needs to be patriotic. And it starts from the leadership all the way down. So I still encourage you to come back home and try and do your best and invest in Ghana or mentor somebody or help somebody so that our country Ghana can move forward. Thank you all so much for watching.